in this world probably according to your age you're either finding out all the snares and traps and all of the, the, the it's like the wilderness even though we live in the in civilization with houses and food and, and shelter water security and all this stuff right but in the spiritual realm it's just like the animal plant uh, animal planet kingdom right where predators are everywhere and uh, in a lot of ways you're the prey but in the spiritual realm they attack your thoughts your soul you feel the symptoms you feel the you know disease sickness mental illness um, insecurity baggage all this stuff that, that comes against you that you feel burdened and suicidal and all of that that is the equivalent of what's happening to you in the spiritual realm so I'm gonna attempt to try to break it down to those people that want to help themselves let me start off by saying Jesus is Lord and he's in control of all of that so he has the power in the dominion to set everything in the right course but it takes practice let me put on my seatbelt it takes practice on doing the, the the right thing over and over again to seeing the results because a lot of us have formulated a practice around doing the wrong thing and it's become a habitual practice where sin turned into iniquity and when sin turns into iniquity you, you're basically drinking vile poison you're hurting yourself, you're destroying yourself, and it's disguised as fun and pleasure. But the, the symptoms of the aftermath is the evidence of what it does to you. So thorn and thistles, right? Um, being in the muck, dirty, guilt, shame and condemnation. These are the symptoms of that spiritual realm of what we deposit and withdraw when we live our life a certain type of way. So, just like the mailman delivers the mail and he's the messenger, you will be given thoughts as a message to you. And the Bible refers to this as darts, right? Both God and the devil can both speak to you on the same frequency and the same radar so that's why the bible says to discern the spirits to test the spirits and that my sheep know my voice and to another they won't listen it's all signifying your responsibility your part in this whole walk is to discern your walk with god and what his voice sounds like and what and the missions that he's asking you to carry out now, an overview of the mission is simple. Very simple, actually. The Bible says, if you keep my commands, you love me. Right? Like, a disobedient child, a rebellious child, a stiff-necked child in the household, breaking all the rules, is bound to get kicked out of the house. Their, their security and their safety and their covering is then removed. They're out in the elements where danger is around them. I know people like this. I have a family member that's like this right now. She burned all her bridges with her rebellious attitude. Like she is just somebody that you can't get along with. A lot of that is spiritual, but the demons do over time to convince you that this is, that you're getting something out of the deal. Now, if you zoom out, you'll see that that person is hurt. They, they have a lot of PTSD. They've been through a lot of trauma. Life treats them really harshly. But yet, at the same token, they have all this pride. Puffed up, haughty, thinking that they're better than everybody, entitled, selfish. Not thinking about what they're, they do and consequences. And you know, in a, in a way, it's like the world is their oyster, and you're in the way a lot of the time of them getting what they want. So then, if you're in the way, they'll either manipulate you, lie to you, cheat you, 
or just run you over altogether. So a person like that, the Bible says they reap what they sow. So often, everything that they're putting out there is just being returned to them in a different type of way. But they're, they're on a downward spiral. They feel like they're living in hell already. So they look at suicide as a way out, a lot of them. I used to live this life, by the way. I know a lot about what I'm talking about. But then, in terms of living that life, right, you can change. There is, there is this conversion that is possible that God wants everybody to know about. It's called being born again, right? I've talked about it a lot in, in my videos, but the message doesn't change. The Bible doesn't change and God doesn't change. And so it's just the same message. Now the message is this, everything that I've said so far about reaping what you, you sow, etc., that has to do with like what you put out there, right? And what did God, God want for us since the beginning? Relationship with him and then to duplicate his image on the earth in other words if god is love he wants love to flourish all over the earth and not only that but you know just to treat each other nice treat others the way you would like to be treated all that is a branch on love right and then um serve one another etc now I've talked on different topics in this video so far. We talked on, um, I wanna revert back to spiritual warfare and the wilderness and the kingdom of the animal kingdom that I was, you know, I was kind of using that as a pinpointing it so that you can know what I mean. You know, if you look at animal planet, like a gazelle out there in the middle of the, the green pastures, a lion crouching down, looking at it, the gazelle doesn't know anything is going on, but yet it's being hunted. And the Bible says that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who can devour. So these practical examples is like real life for us. And the way that you see that it's real life is the different types of decisions that we, we make by going to a bad influence's house, knocking on their door. They get us in on a bad journey with them, like, oh, a drug deal or something like that that can equate to being devoured by the enemy you understand you don't literally get devoured you get devoured in such a way where you remove like your future is now blemished or thwarted or you understand if you find yourself doing a prison sentence you are devoured by your wrong choices and decisions you're living at that point with a lot of regret and darkness and thinking really negatively about the future at the same time because you're thinking man my, my life is over right so then that in a way is like saying like the enemy goes around seeking who could devour he's thinking set up set them up and trap them right with their own choices so he entices your flesh he tempts he tempts you where you are weak understanding full well that he he's understanding full well where he's taking you on the journey and there is checkpoints and he doesn't take you from smoking cigarettes to being a heroin addict overnight but he can take you from smoking cigarettes to smoking a black and mild to smoking a blunt to then taking a pill of xanax to then drinking a beer to then trying cocaine to then saying what the heck i've gone this far let's do heroin what's the point right he doesn't take you from one to the other he'll scare you off so when children when kids are kids i hope people are watching this video it's, it's very beneficial people listen when you're seven eight nine ten years old the devil uses television cartoons understand if you look at cartoons a lot of it is a preparation for where he wants to take them. You see the witches, you see the spells, you see these cartoons that they act like it's innocent. And this is where the devil uses people in the way of, oh, please, come on. You know, like that that type of language of minimizing something just to let it slide, let it ride. That's the enemy, man. 
you have to understand that in the in the word of the Bible, good is good and bad is bad. And bad is not good and good is not bad. And there is no middle ground here. So if it's not beneficial, it's only going to take you by the hand and take you further on in the back. You understand that it doesn't have to be terrible. It can just be a stepping stone to the terrible. You get that you, you may not have murdered anybody, but if you already have hate in your heart, it's a stepping stone to murdering somebody. As a matter of fact, the Bible takes it there. It says if you hate somebody, you murdered them in your heart. But what I mean is, is that it, it goes with having an anger problem and then not being able to control yourself and stepping stones all the way to the point where you can you you do something like that but you didn't do it overnight he cultivated that step by step and so all of these things that we say oh that's not a big deal oh that's not a big deal don't worry about it man that's not that bad you know there's worse things out there it's only a stepping stone to get you to the place where inevitably you you you're just like okay i arrived and this is bad i arrived I can I can say that this is bad. Bro, when the Bible says that the devil blinds the eyes of the unbeliever, he'll get you so blind that you think that rape is not bad, murder is not bad, and you'll look for ways to justify it. Well, what did they do? Did they deserve it? And this and that. Like, okay, there is, there is you know, bad guys entering into your house and this and that in self-defense. But I'm talking about like, the mindset of the individual, the, the bar is, is, is stooping so low that people justify something that it's bad in nature. And they're like, well, a shrug of the shoulders and, and, and no big deal. So we've, we've left holiness and purity from the eyes of God, like of how he sees things. And now we're seeing it from our perspective. And we're saying, well, this world considers all of this to be neutral ground so i'm just gonna follow along but anyways we'll just leave that there because i got more important things to talk about so then forget that so then we have an understanding that our soul and our spirit like our mind the symptoms the feelings how we feel about our outlook it's all a design behind the scenes the veil the, the curtains there is spiritual forces attacking you either through tv music uh people siblings all of that are deposits into your life deposits in the form of a seed that when you water it enough when you return back to that place you're watering that seed so if it's a bad atmosphere if it's a bad uh say a uh, bad company you're watering seeds and then that, those things start to grow as character defects in your own life. You never dealt with anger, but you deal with people that are angry all the time. You start to now um, have those seeds, those that imagery of them yelling and throwing things and, and being belligerent now starts to rub off on you. The Bible says bad company corrupts good character. And so long story short is this. Those things lead you towards the road of destruction. The Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction. Broad. It's broad. There's many streets on it and people are walking on this broad road. Remember, the Bible is for you in the sense that it's trying to tell you, hey, listen, I'm giving you a heads up. I'm letting you know the insight, understanding, right? The more clarity you have, the more you're walking in the light, the more you can see. However... Those that practice bad things, they're walking in darkness. So they're stumbling all over the place, frustrated, not understanding why it is that they feel the way that they feel and all of this other stuff. And it's tied to the spiritual realm. So how is everything reversible? What's the antidote? What's the, the solution here? Live a good moral life, first and foremost. That would evacuate a lot of the bad you know what they call energy but it's demons right a lot of the bad stuff leaves when you start to practice a good moral simple life that you're not looking to uh to steal kill or destroy right one of the three things that double stands for
And so, when you just give up that life and you pick up a life that is honorable, work, working hard, waking up, going to work, coming back, making a, an honest paycheck and paying your bills, as an example, that, you take away something out of that, right? It's like, yeah, you know, they may be making the fast money, the easy money and all of that, but there's a whole lot of conditions attached to all of that. Some of them you can visibly see, but other ones are spiritually, that their conscience, they don't feel, they don't feel, uh, you know, like they're doing right and they feel weight on their shoulder like it's not a sure thing it could collapse at any moment and in turn that could land them in jail or this or that and so these whatever that is just an example of living the wrong life trying to justify it because you have a family to feed or this or that you know if you want to feed your family you want to do the right thing ask god he will open up the way for you, right? He will, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. If you want to change, pray. That's a great start, right? And after you pray, start to do the things that show God that you're meeting him halfway. We... I'm, I'm going to tell you something that might not tickle the ears, but it's absolutely true. And somebody out there will follow this advice and they'll see that it's true. When you minimalize your life and you simplify it and you have less people around you, less forces, less things occupying your mind space and you just kind of like simplify your life on a routine practice of just living your life in a way that it there's an honorable life just um i don't know being a family man being a working man and being a godly man all at the same time those three things right you work pay your bills you go to church you you, you honor god with your lifestyle and you stay out of trouble and you don't join people doing their fully uh, foolery and you just close the door on that and you live a nice simple life i i kid you not that person has more treasure than the person that has that lives in the mansion with the Ferrari. And you say, no way, no way. And the fact is, is that how do you calculate happiness? Is it by stuff or is it the way that you live with yourself on the inside and, and view yourself? Like, if you got a bunch of demons, those demons don't let you live in peace. And you can have a bunch of stuff. And you can hate yourself at the same time. And you can ruin your life with your choices because those demons are always getting you to do the wrong things. And you can constantly be living this life of, I'm not content even though I have everything. So, I don't know if this... I, guess I, I bounced around a little bit, but... The gist of the, 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 the video, which I'm about to end right now, has to do with keeping your nose clean, clean you know, staying out of trouble, living a simple life. You know, living for God is the best thing that anybody can do. And when I say God, let me be specific. So many religions nowadays. When I say God, I mean Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not Allah. I, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. It's just not Allah. And so, I love the Muslims. I'm out to reach the Muslims. If we can have a conversation. Right? So then, okay. That's the video, guys. God bless you.